God, we are walking out of the night and into the dawn that seems even darker. We have no idea what will happen. We have followed Jesus. He surprises us a lot, tends to turn things upside down. He plants hope in the most hopeless circumstances. But now we are afraid. Now we are separated. The crowd, the crosses, the guards, the dark clouds, and finally the rain. We are drenched in the gloom. Christ, the pain bearer, laid to rest. The stone encloses the tomb. It is finished. It is over. Is there light on the other side? We know one thing for sure. We are not good at alone. We will wait, God. We will sit here in the darkness and wait. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani, that is my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Friends, I want to invite you to remember today that it is a good day that we celebrate Christ's sacrifice. We are here to worship, and I want to invite you to stand as we join our voices together in our call to remembrance. How great is God's love for all who worship him, greater than the distance between heaven and earth. How far has the Lord taken our sins from us? Farther than the distance from east to west. Just as parents are kind to their children, the Lord is kind to all who worship him. All of you thousands who serve and obey God, come and praise your Lord. All of God's creation and all that he rules, come and praise your Lord. With all my heart, I praise the Lord. We'll continue and sing, Alas and Did My Savior Bleed. Alas and did my Savior bleed And did my sovereign die Was for devote that sacred head For sinners such as I Was it for crimes that I have done He groaned upon the tree Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree. Well might the sun in darkness hide and shut its glories in. When God the mighty maker died, for his own creature's sin. Thus might I hide my blushing face while his dear cross appears. Dissolve my heart in thankfulness 
and melt mine eyes to tears. But drops of tears can ne'er repay the debt of love I owe. Here, Lord, I give myself away. Tis all that I can do. Amen. You may be seated. It is important on this day, Good Friday, to offer a prayer of confession, to be humble before the Lord who gave his life for us. I would invite you to join with me in praying our prayer of confession this afternoon. Jesus, this room seems darker today, even if the sunlight is shining bright. Our minds are overwhelmed, our hearts feel heavy, and our souls a bit troubled. The cross is because of us. The crown is because of us. The beatings are because of us. The blood is because of us. We confess we are sinners. All the wrong we have done, all the hurt we have caused, and all the pain we have inflicted was laid upon you, Jesus. Thank you for seeing us in our sin and choosing to still love us. Thank you for accepting us as we are and choosing to destroy the power of sin and death. This is amazing grace. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I would invite you to stand as we sing, Were You There? and then remain standing for our gospel reading. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you my Lord. Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you the tree were you there when they nailed him to the tree oh sometimes it causes me to tremble 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 were you Were you there when they pierced him in the side? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you him in the side. Were you there when the sun refused to shine? Were you there when the sun refused to shine? Oh, oh, oh sometimes it calls me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when the sun refused to shine? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? 
Gospel reading today comes from Matthew, chapter 27, verses 45 through 54. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani? That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran over and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice, and he breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs were also opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now, when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took, pl what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
The song Micah just played is, uh, What Wondrous Love Is This? It's uh, very much a song of Lent and, um, and of Holy Week as well. So thank you, Micah, very much. The nails tearing in his hands, the sweat stinging in his eyes, and the ridicule of the crowd echoing in his ears. It was almost too much to endure. The congealed blood on his scalp, his emaciated body stretched too long, and the thorns piercing deeper with each move. It was almost too much to bear. The taste of sour wine on his chapped lips and swollen tongue, the aching of his knees slammed down hard on a cobblestone street, and his ripped apart flesh from a severe whipping. It was almost too much to tolerate. The breath too labored to take in, his heart still obedient but badly broken, and the sight of his mother weeping uncontrollably. It was almost too much to stomach. Jesus is dying on a cross used by the Roman government to execute dissidents. As his life draws to an end, Jesus remembers King David's prayer in Psalm 22. When everything in life seems too heavy to bear, Jesus cries out in a soul-wrenching prayer of lament. Matthew records that prayer from Psalm 22, and he records it in his own gospel, 27 and verse 26. My God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? Forsaken and forgotten, deserted and discarded, abused and abandoned, dishonored and disgraced. It was all too much. The Savior finally surrenders to the Father's will, the Son of God, breathes his last and dies. In Matthew 27, verse 45, the apostle tells us that Jesus' death changes everything. Matthew says, from noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. Jesus dies so your sins can be forgiven. Jesus dies so your relationship with the Father can be restored. Jesus dies to give you the hope of abundant life now and eternal life in heaven. Jesus dies to bring life, real life, to each one who opens their heart and mind and soul to receive Jesus as Savior. When Jesus dies, there is nothing that remains the same on earth or in heaven. Matthew describes what happens that day. 
All of creation shakes violently when it recognizes that Jesus is the creator. The death of Jesus impacts much more than human life. It impacts all of the created order. The curtain in the temple is torn in two. The ripped curtain announces each one of us has access to the Father's grace, the forgiveness of Jesus, and the power of the Holy Spirit. The dead are raised to life. Sin and death will not forever separate us from the love of the Lord, now or in eternity. In Matthew 27, verse 54, the apostle tells us there's only one conclusion on this day. Truly, this man, Jesus, was God's son. On a day when we gather to focus on the death of Jesus, there is still good news. That's why we call it Good Friday. The good news is that Jesus is the Son of God who lives and dies to bring us back to the Father's heart. Jesus is the Son of God who dies so that we might live now fully and abundantly as well as live forever in heaven. Jesus' best friend dies before he can get there to help and to heal. When approached by his friend's sister, Jesus reminds her that there's more to life and more to death than she could ever imagine. In John 11, verse 25 and 26, Jesus says to the sister, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. And then Jesus asks her a question, do you believe this? And that might be the question Jesus is asking you today. Do you believe this? You see, the way we live life gives meaning to our death. And our death will give meaning to our life. Jesus lived to show us how to live and love, and how to die. Living a life of holiness was not all that Jesus came to do. Jesus came to die so that we might live. Live in this life and live in the next life. For those who love the Lord, the cross is more than a universal symbol of death. The cross is a symbol of real life and eternal life. Let us pray. Jesus, I just don't believe we'll ever fully understand what you went through on this day in order to make possible our salvation, to make possible real life, to make possible eternal life in heaven. I just don't think we'll ever fully understand that. Maybe when we get to heaven, you can show us. But for right now, it's beyond our comprehension, beyond our imagination, beyond our understanding. So we pray a simple and humble prayer, Jesus. that through our simple faith you might show us your love, might forgive our sin, and might open our hearts to receive the salvation for which you died. Jesus, thank you for loving us more than we understand, more than we deserve, more than we could ever imagine. We ask our prayers in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and sing, please. Crucified with me 
Yea, the sturdy dreamers answered To the death we follow Thee Lord, we are able Our spirits are Thine Remold them, make us like the divine Thy guiding radiance above us shall be A beacon to God to love and loyalty Are ye able to remember when a thief lifts up his eye His pardoned soul is worthy Of a place in paradise Lord, we are able Our spirits are thine Remold them, make us like the divine Thy guiding radiance above us shall be A beacon to God, to love and loyalty Are ye able when the shadows close around you with the sod to believe that spirit triumphs To commend your soul to God Lord, we are able Our spirits are thine Remold them, make us like the divine Thy guiding radiance shall be a beacon to God, to love and loyalty. Are ye able still, the Master whispers down eternity, and heroic spirits answer, now is then in Galilee. Lord, we are able, our spirits are thine Remold them, make us like the divine Thy guiding radiance above us shall be Before we receive our final word of blessing, um, I want to give you an invitation to lunch. I and uh, Micah too, we've just been driven crazy today by the aromas coming out of our kitchen down there in Fellowship Hall. Michelle Kring and Jody Parsons have done a great job. Uh, There's a couple different kinds of soup, uh, chicken tortilla soup, uh, a baked potato soup, and then there are these absolutely amazing ham and cheese hot pockets. And there are enough for each of you to have two of those, plus soup. So everyone is welcome. It's just right down the hall. Um, Don't rush away and go to McDonald's, okay? You can get a, a real meal right here, okay? I'm just telling you that, and we'd love to have you down in Fellowship Hall. As you go down, um, just jump right through the, the cafeteria, the buffet line there, and grab your food and uh, go with that. So the last song we sang um, in, in the refrain, it says, Remold them, make us like the divine. That's what's possible because of Jesus' death, is that we can be made more and more like Jesus Christ, our Savior. And that's my prayer for you today, is that this day you will take the time and invest the prayer and give the reflection 
to becoming more and more like Christ. So with that in mind, children of God, let's go in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless.